I'm really excited about 2024 trends because I see that we're going towards a more classic direction. At a high level, I'm seeing that people are wanting things with more color than what we've seen in the past few years. I'm going to reference this Vogue article by Elise Taylor. It's a great roundup of different interior designers' view on 2024 trends. Studio McGee also put out a 2024 trends report. I'll include the link to that in the description box below. Most of the trends that I'm seeing here, in my opinion, are ideas that are pretty timeless and will live beyond beyond 2024. First up, we have fashion colors as home colors. A couple of different takes they have here. Martin Lawrence Bullard said, Brown is about to have the most major moment. Fashion has already embraced it, and now we will see it in interiors from lacquered walls to velvet drapery to heavy linen sofas. Joy Moyler says, Red dominated the fashion scene in 2023, and I see that spilling over into interiors. I'm ready for it. It may be mixed with a side of latte too. Studio McGee noted that red is a color that they'll really be leaning into. Rust and burgundy. I see that a lot of their products are heavily using those colors. My fireplace is a red brick fireplace. It takes up a lot of space. A few years ago, when we first moved into our house, red was not popular. Neutral, white, minimalism was at its peak. That's what I wanted at the time. And it really bothered me that it was red. I wanted to paint this fireplace and our brown wall paneling white. I initially thought that the red brick and the wood darkened the room, but as I started learning more about color and light, I started to embrace that. A lot of the furniture and the style that this room has evolved into is leaning into that moodiness and these really rich and warm saturated colors, which in 2024 apparently is trendy. Kind of funny because there was a time where I really did not understand how to work with this. I personally am at a point where I decorate a lot with colors that I understand, and that's heavily influenced by my own personal style in fashion. I don't know if any of you all are into color theory. Understanding color and color theory has been really helpful for me in developing my own personal style and the style of our home. Because I'm warm toned and have darker features, these are the colors that I really understand and I have the most confidence in working in. At the end of the day, trends come in and out, so decorating with what feels good to you is what I think is most important, and I think that even though different colors come and go, there is a way to create a timeless look regardless of which color palette you're leaning into. Peach Fuzz is Pantone's color of the year. I don't see talked about here, but I see that it's been talked about in other places. I am honoring Pantone's color of the year with my outfit today. And both of these are secondhand pieces. Personally, don't know that I'll be adopting that color outside of my wardrobe, maybe as an accent throw pillow. I'll also include any products that I mentioned in this video, which may be affiliate links, which allows me to earn a small commission at no additional cost to you and help support this channel. You can see our full display disclaimers on the about page. Next up, we have vintage lighting. Heidi Callier says, vintage lighting adds a much needed patina to living spaces. The right piece can really bring a room together and make it feel collected. I've been finding some amazing 50s era Italian and French floor lamps and pendants on first dibs lately. My good friend is great at this. If she sees a lamp that has a cord that doesn't work, she's bought lighting kits and been able to repair a lot of those. Another trend is quiet luxury. This is a quote by interior designer Jake Arnold. This is a forever tenant for our studio, but in the same way a quiet luxury wardrobe is assembled, within design there will be a continued emphasis on classic investment pieces that you can build a room around. Pieces that are timeless in classic shapes and silhouettes that have many lives and evolve through reupholstery. What stood out to me here is a continued emphasis on classic investment pieces that you can build a room around. My interpretation of classic are things that are tried and true, which doesn't necessarily belong to a specific style. Next up we have stripes. Heidi Kellier says, stripes in an over the top way, please. I love to see a full dip striped room or a striped tiled shower. Feels traditional and yet modern and so fresh right now. And we see a couple of other designers comment on them as well. Studio McGee actually had a trend called the country club aesthetic. And I think that is a combination of that quiet luxury and these stripes. That is a trend that I also am a fan of in terms of the look. I think it's very clean. Our outdoor space is a more traditional looking space. So if I see the right 
cushions that have a nice stripe that I like. That's something that I would definitely be up for incorporating into our outdoor spaces. Are any of these trends things that you are really excited about? The color yellow. We are loving a buttery yellow for millwork in a kitchen or pantry. I'm also really feeling that hue for upholstery, particularly in rooms that get a lot of natural light, like a kitchen, sunroom, or outdoor spaces. That was from Jake Arnold. Do any of you decorate a lot with yellow? I use a lot of gold. But if you notice behind me, I have some new art. I'm so excited about this art that I found. Talk about it more probably in another video, but it has some pops of yellow. And if you've been here before, you also know my jello bowl. It's been a color that I've been enjoying incorporating more in my own homes. At a high level, I think that there's just a lot more color that we're going to see. The next trend we have here is marble accessories. Jenny Kane says, final trend I'm loving currently is the use of stone or marble furniture and accessories, whether it's a marble coaster or tray or even an entire coffee table, like our Sir coffee table. I think going beyond what's expected in terms of material will really give your home personality. I am really excited to see if we start seeing some different types of stones being used outside of the travertine that has been more popular recently and outside of a white marble, it'll be really cool to start seeing some other options available at retailers. I have this vintage green blue marble pedestal over here. It is one of my absolute favorite pieces and it has a couple of little chips, but it's imperfect and I'm totally fine with that. The next trend we have here is dark wood paneled walls. And in this picture, I see it's a combination of stained wood and just darker rich woods. Here, Robin Standifer says, we're seeing a revival of dark wood paneled walls to create warmth and coziness, typology that instantly takes you from traditional to modern. I'm all about using natural materials and things that are biodegradable and just more sustainable. I think that we feel a deeper connection to those things also. The next trend is one of my absolute favorites, which is local makers and design. Here, Vicky Charles says, my favorite interiors are those that connect me to the place I'm in. Often, this is through local craft and materials. When you're drawing on the local vernacular, you're drawing on centuries of experience of what works in that particular area and it's reflected in the materials. Reclaimed wood floors will never be wrong, along with respecting heritage, architecture, and the hand of the maker in the work. I'm so excited about this trend. As I mentioned, when we first moved into the house, I wanted to paint this brick and our wood paneling, just change things to the house that I'm so glad my husband convinced me not to change that I have intact today and that I appreciate so much today. I can't imagine if I would have painted this beautiful redwood, these long runs of old growth redwood. If you've been here before, you also know that I am a fan of getting art that is made by local artists. And I'm a big fan of finding vintage art made by artists who are from the area. I was born and raised here in the Bay Area in California. So finding pieces by California artists is something that is very special to me. This bowl that I have here is one of my absolute favorites and it's by the artist Jade Snow Wong who was doing this at a time when it was really unconventional and hard for her to do. I managed to find two of her bowls over the years and they are something that I treasure so much. How they said it here, my favorite interiors are those that connect me to the place that I'm in. That's something that speaks to me so much because like that the bowl this painting that is made by another California artist and these bowls that I have that are made here in California. Those are all pieces that are so special to me because they feel like they're from home. Another trend on this list that was really exciting for me to see also was one of a kind pieces. Jeremiah Brent says, embracing the artisan. There's been such a movement in celebrating handmade and one of a kind pieces. Pottery, dishware, and art add such a bespoke feel. I call these pieces the last layer when we're accessorizing a new space. This one also really speaks to me. You know that I collect crystal glass, Waterford. I've been getting into art glass that is more colorful as well. Buying something that is handmade from an artist is something that is so special to me because I just feel so connected. That's someone's work living in your home. I'm a big fan of buying less, but either better quality or something that is more meaningful to me. We have been so patient and haven't built the walls. I was so excited about these art pieces behind me. Lillian, if you're watching, I know you are an artist and I was so excited for you to see these pieces. Next, we have the trend collectibles. Martin Brunitsky says, 
embracing the art of collection and curating stuff within the home. I collect lots of different things. I have a selection of 12 small 19th century landscape paintings and grouping of Italian flags of nobility, capriccios, and floral still lifes of my home in West Sussex. A home is made when it is filled with things that have meaning to you. That's exactly what I was just describing, and in my opinion, it's so true. Being intentional about the things you bring into your home and that they have meaning is super important to me. So the next one here we have is China Pantries. Joy Moiler says, clients are asking for contemporary takes on the butler pantry, for spaces to display and store flatware in China, almost with a retail display quality. I'm excited to see this trend. We have this little room off of the kitchen that we use as a pantry. Right now it's just using wire shelves, but renovating to be a walk-in pantry. So I'm excited to see this trend because getting more ideas will be really helpful. I'm looking forward to seeing how people incorporate this trend. The next one we have here is glass bricks. Here Bridget Romanic says that glass bricks are making a comeback. The ones used in the 80s and 90s usually for a shower or bathroom, though today they're being used as innovative material for floors, tables, and tiles. That's not something that really speaks to me, but curious to see it. Futuristic materials, contemporary pieces and fixtures developed with innovative materials like recycled plastics and fibers grown from fungi will continue to break through the noise. That was from Kelly Worsler. Yeah, I'm excited to see where we go with new materials that are being used and hope that they will be eco-friendly. <laughs> So some things that were mentioned that were out, mid-century modern angular design and ivory boucle pillows are out according to that list. And there were a few more things. I wanted to call that out because I think it's helpful to be aware of that, what's popular and what's trendy, but for that to not impact your own personal style. To me, what's going out is an opportunity to look at the inventory that's out there and try and get a deal and incorporate something that can fit into your own style. My home was built in the 1950s. That's the predominant style of my home. So I'm going to continue to have mid-century modern pieces in my home. Right now, the secondhand market, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, next door is flooded with gray furniture. I got these swivel chairs for $300. I plan to keep an eye out for mid-century modern furniture and gray pieces if I feel like I can incorporate them into my overall style. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you found value in it. I will see you all at the next one. Thanks so much.